Welcome to the 2021 NBA Mock Draft 4.0, my first mock draft following the NCAA championship game. And if you're keen, you might have noticed that this is a different thumbnail than the one you clicked on. It's actually my thumbnail from my last mock draft. I just changed the number. And the reason I've done that is because I'm going to be simulating the lottery in this video. In order to create some randomness and to change up my mock draft a little bit, this is not going to happen every single time. I just want to change things up. Let's simulate the lottery, see where teams end up. It's one of the more interesting lotteries in a while because, you know, we see the Rockets. Their pick is top four protected. Otherwise, it goes to the Thunder. There's also the uh, Timberwolves pick that's top three protected. Otherwise, it goes to the Warriors. It's one of the more interesting lotteries. And I think it's, you know, it's cool to do some simulations because we don't know how it's going to end up at the end of the day. And we're going to go ahead and simulate the lottery. Also, that might be where it, why the thumbnail looks kind of wacky. So I'm going to be using tankathon.com. They've got a cool little... Uh, drafts lottery sim simulator thing so we're gonna click simulate the lottery right here and see where the teams end up so Detroit Detroit moves up to number one Houston at two Toronto at three and that Minnesota pick goes to the Warriors at four Magic Thunder Cavs and Wizards so I'm gonna go ahead and change that while I change that maybe click subscribe it really helps with the channel I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by Friday, by the end of Friday. So I'd really love it if we could hit that goal. Um, that'd be super cool. That's been a goal of mine for a really long time. And yeah, uh, it would be great if we could hit that. So looking at this, seeing the Raptors jump up five spots is going to be the main thing I'm looking at. And um, I think that should be pretty interesting. Magic, Thunder, Cavs. Wizards and uh, yeah, Cavs and then Wizards and then we're done changing this. I believe everything else lines up. Standings are based on April 14th. So here we go. Uh, simulated lottery and let's begin the draft. Starting up pick number one, the Pistons luck out and receive the number one overall pick. I would usually have the Rockets if I wasn't doing this lottery simulated stuff. Uh, but Cade Cunningham just screams this is like the perfect pick for them. Looking at Killian Hayes, he's been struggling throughout his career so far. Even if he does turn it on, I think Cade Cunningham could be a great backcourt mate. Uh, allow both of them to play off ball. A really solid height combination at the one and the two guard. And yeah, Cade Cunningham, super dynamic player. And you pop him alongside Killian Hayes, also really a potentially really great offensive player it, it could work out i don't know if it would but you've got to go best player available if you're picking number one you're picking kate cunningham at number two the rockets um i mean evan mobley is interesting but from what we've heard the rockets are committed to playing christian wood at the center position if that is the case i would think they would go guard right here either suggs or jalen uh, Suggs or Green, the Jalens, and between the two, I think you're taking Jalen Green. Jalen Green really balled out uh, late in the G League season, and he's got just such a high upside as a scorer, but he also does a lot of other things. Uh, good potential as a defender as well. Uh, I do like Suggs, but he just really didn't get to show off his off his offensive package too much in Gonzaga, in Gonzaga, in, at Gonzaga. That wasn't a hard word at all. He just doesn't get to show off his offensive abilities. I mean, we saw like against BYU where he hit a couple of threes late game in the uh, that tournament game. Otherwise, he just really hasn't um, shown off his offensive skill set as much as Jalen Green has. At pick number three, the Raptors are up, and this is a really, really easy draft pick. Evan Mobley at number three. I mean, they need a center, and Mobley's right there. Perfect player. I mean... Uh, the Raptors, I personally see them. They're probably not going to move up in the lottery. It's unlikely. If they do, they're going to target Mobley. If they don't, they're going to target Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Jackson. But since they did move up and they have the ability to draft Evan Mobley, they're going to draft Evan Mobley. The Warriors at four. 
They got the ability to draft Jonathan Kuminga. They got their pick from the Timberwolves. Thanks, Timberwolves. I think you're going Kuminga. Suggs is a cool player, but just doesn't fit with his team at all. Uh, Kuminga can learn a lot from Draymond Green. Has such a crazy high defensive upside. And you combine that with one of the best defensive players of all time. I know he's not the best, but he should be considered as one of the best defensive players of all time. And you teach that to a guy who's 6'8", 225, at 18 years old, and is showing defensive upside in a professional league already. Um, yeah, this is a super easy pick. Also has a lot of offensive potential. At pick number five, the Magic. You got to take Suggs. You don't leave Suggs on the board. I, I, I've said this about the Magic. Don't feel committed to any of these guards, whether it be Cole Anthony or RJ Hampton or Markel Fultz. If you have the opportunity to draft top five and draft one of these top guards, you have to do it if you're the Orlando Magic. And that's exactly what they're going to do with Jalen Suggs. Well, at least what I would do. Pick number six, the Thunder. I've talked a lot about drafting a forward right here. I don't know if they're really committed to any of these players other than maybe Lou Dort and Shea Gildas. There's a lot of interesting players who've showed off, you know, really great talents like uh, Alexei Pokashevsky and not even Ty Jerome a little bit, but Teo Maldon, uh, Moses Brown's been interesting, Isaiah Roby, but they're not really committed to anyone other than Gildas and Dort. So they could be looking point guard, but I just don't see a point guard up here. Davion Mitchell, technically a point guard. I wouldn't take him this high. I think you're going either Jalen Johnson or Scotty Barnes. I think I've pretty much repeatedly said Scotty Barnes is a great fit with them. Uh, FSU, look at Patrick Williams. People are talking about him all the time. Scotty Barnes can get that same type of buzz. Playmaking forward and just really interesting player. Jalen Johnson, he... So he can do a bunch of different things. He's a questionable shooter. Both players are questionable shooters. I don't know. I just see higher upside in Scotty Barnes than Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson's skill set at this point just feels a little bit more limited compared to Scotty Barnes, despite the fact Scotty Barnes came off of the bench at FSU. I'm going to take Scotty Barnes to the Thunder to play at their four. The Cavs, they miss out on the top five and. Uh, where are they looking? Well, I think you're still looking at the power forward position. You got Okoro, you got Sexton, you got Garland, you got Jared Allen. You want to fill the power forward position. Isaiah Jackson is not a power forward. Franz Wagner is an interesting player, but I think some people might interpret him as just not very high upside. So you go with the higher upside player than Jalen Johnson. Maybe you'd think Keon Johnson would work here, but... I the thing about Keon Johnson is I just see a lot of issues with him comparatively to another player like Jared Allen, who is picked pick number six, and or Jared Allen. No, I'm going to say Jared Culver. He has a lot of similarities to Jared Culver, and that's why I'm gonna you're going to see Keon Johnson drop. And also, I do view him as a power forward or a small forward, not a shooting guard. But if they are to take power forward, Jalen Johnson's the easy pick here. Maybe it's not the best of fits, but I think you go best available in this situation. The Wizards at 8. They've talked about a long time about acquiring a rim-protecting center. Isaiah Jackson is quite easily, easily their guy here. Another player I'd seriously consider is Kai Jones. Isaiah Jackson, just looking at the tape, he fits a little bit better just as a rim protector and a rim roller than Kai Jones does. Kai Jones is more interesting as a spacer and as a finisher. But I don't know if they would, you know, draft a player like that when they already have a very similar player in Thomas Bryant right here. I think you go Isaiah Jackson, get more of a traditional center. I mean, he's still kind of not traditional, but uh, yeah, uh, he's got the quickness. He can, he's got crazy athleticism as a great shot blocker, pretty good rebounder. Does have upside in other areas of his game as well, in the post, in the mid range. Isaiah Jackson to the Wizards. The Kings at 9, Things the draft order hasn't really changed up after this point. I think you're looking forward or you're looking big man. Davion Mitchell, can't believe he's dropping though. I uh, really am, a, I'm pretty high on Davion Mitchell, so uh, he's going to drop a bit more though. Kings, I think they were looking at Isaiah Jackson. If Isaiah Jackson not here, I think you go with the next, the next best big man in this class, and that's Kai Jones. 
Kai Jones can space the floor. He can be a rim protector. He can guard the perimeter. He's 6'10". I don't know if he's a 4 or 5. The Kings would give him a situation to figure that out. Player, a nice defensive player alongside Marvin Bagley. Davion Mitchell is the better defender uh, compared to him. But it's just not a position of need. So you go pretty much the second best defender in their draft range as well. So a Kings team that's 30th in the NBA in defensive rating. They need a guy like Kai Jones. The Magic drafting with the Bulls pick. They just drafted Jalen Suggs. And I think they would go... I don't actually know what they would go here. It's just confusing. I think I'm going to stick with saying uh, don't fall in love with your guards. And go with a guy in Josh Giddy. I don't know if he's a guard. I don't know if he's a forward. But he's super high potential. Um, he's got a bunch of different skills. He plays like a point guard. He can pass a little. He can shoot a little. Uh, I don't know if he's the greatest defender yet. Super interesting. 6'8". Kind of a point guard. Uh, Wagner and Kispert are both interesting players. But once again, if you're looking at a high potential player. I think you're looking Giddy. Or you're looking Keon Johnson. I'm going to go ahead and give them Keon Johnson, though, uh, just because they do kind of have a need at the small forward position. They're kind of over-reliant on James Ennis. I don't know if Chumo Okeke is their small forward for the future. We know that um, Jonathan Isaac is operating as their power forward, so we might as well pick up a, another forward. I, I do like Giddy, but I think Keon Johnson makes a little bit more sense, especially if they're looking for a high upside player in the number 10 pick. He's still a high upside player, even if I dislike his game, and I can't deny that. Pelicans at 11. I've talked a lot about Moses Moody to the Pelicans, but this time we're going to go Davion Mitchell, and it's because he can knock down the three. He's a great defender, can even score on the ball a little bit, can hit the mid-range, and a team, they like Lonzo Ball. You add in a really good defender. I think they have a bottom five, bottom six defense. This dude's the best defender in the entire draft class. He is 6'2", a bit undersized, but playing alongside a 6'6 point guard in Lonzo Ball, hopefully. I don't know. Are they going to let him go? Couldn't tell you. But Davion Mitchell, he, I think he accomplishes what you want from players to play alongside Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. So they're going to draft him right here. The Pacers at 12. We go with Franz Wagner again. Just talking about their lineup, um, you see two scores in Levert and Warren. If there's a, ever a situation in which you want to bench one of them, or you need to take one, up, one of them out of the game, I would prefer a better defender to come into the game, Franz Wagner. Really interesting defensive player. I wouldn't say he's an amazing defensive player, but he can shoot He can shoot a little bit. He can play make a little bit. He's 6'9". He's going gonna, he's gonna to measure in like a freakishly long wingspan. He's going to have like a 7'3", seven, 7'4 seven, wingspan. And I think it makes a lot of sense here with the Pacers. The Spurs at 13. I think you go with Giddy. Uh, they are a team that really needs a big man, though. Um, I, I do. Jakob Pertl isn't a bad player, but center is where they can improve the most in this lineup. If you're looking center, I think you're looking Sengin. Dude's got a ton of upside. And yeah, he can pass a little bit. Uh, he can... Uh, he's really great rebounder, can score on side, but he's really been turning it on as of lately. Uh, as of late, this is going to be a really interesting player to study coming into the draft. And I know I'm giving a European player to the Spurs, but he's also the next. He's the best big on the board for a long, long while. So I'm going to give him Alperen Sengun. At 14, the Warriors, they're going to select. Uh, I think you guys shoot him. I mean, they draft Kuminga earlier in the draft. I think you want something a bit more substantial, especially when you've got guys like Curry, Clay, and Draymond Green. They're probably on their last legs, but you're also, you're still going to try to win games if they're on your team. If we're looking at players who can come in and help them right away, Corey Kisper. I think he's kind of like a plug-and-play J.J. Redick, especially with a little bit more help in an NBA offense. He's going to get a lot of threes. He moves off ball, off ball pretty well. He's actually actually a pretty solid defender as well. He's not a defensive hole at all for this uh, for that um, Gonzaga team. But if we go and take a look at a guy in Moses Moody, who's going to get a lot of comps to Clay Thompson, you know, uh, it's probably going to be a bench unit type player for them. And 
I think the main advantage there is he's going to be a bit more of a uh, on-ball scorer. He can hit threes, and it's just a question of which player do you like more as a defensive player. Uh, Kispert noticeably has less upside than Moody, and that's why I'm going to go with Moody right here. You've really set yourself up well for the future of Moody, Kuminga, and James Wiseman in this case, and I think that makes a lot of sense for the Warriors to go with. You've got three legitimate future superstars, and I mean, that's a great situation to be in. The Hornets at 15. I think you go with that small ball lineup. I really like their small ball lineup, and they got guards. They got guards on guards. So what compliments the small ball lineup? Uzman Garuba. Um, James Rogers has done a really good job of making this defense work, even without great defensive players. So let's in a guy, add in a guy who could potentially be a really great defensive player. I think he will struggle developing in a James Brego offense because he isn't the best of offensive coaches. But if you're playing Groove at the small ball five, he's going to catch a ton of oops. And he's working on that three. He's working on that J. And if you got a guy like Lamelo Ball, he's going to get him some open shots. Uzman Garuba, potential small ball five for the Hornets. At pick 16, the Thunder are back up after selecting Scotty Barnes. They're using the Heat's pick right now, their final pick of the first round. And I think you look at your potential point guard for the future, Josh Giddy. I do like Trey Mann quite a bit, but Josh Giddy. Uh, you're the Thunder. You, draw, you draft high potential players. 6'8 point guard who could play alongside Shea Gildas Alexander. You have one of the lengthiest backcourts in the NBA. Of course you're going with it. It's so enticing, especially a team that was enticed into trading for Alexei Pokashevsky. I would be, you know, I would be very surprised if they didn't take the opportunity to draft a player like Josh Giddy. The Grizzlies at 17. Feels like they've drafted players who feel like plug-and-play players in the last few years, like players who come in right away and can be good for you. They've got Grayson Allen, Desmond Bain, Xavier Tillman, who else have they drafted in the last few years? They also drafted uh, Brandon Clark. All those guys kind of felt like, you know, they were late players, they, you know, they've been in, they've been on the teams for quite a bit, and the team, the player I've uh, I've been projecting to the Grizzlies quite a bit as Ayo Desumu. I think people are a little bit worried about Ayo Desumu following his performance in the tournament, just not really showing up that much. It was kind of the theme this season for Illinois. Uh, he really didn't take over games, and people might be worried about that. I, I Personally, I wouldn't be, but if that was the case, I think you would look Corey Kispert. Especially with Dylan Brooks here. Dylan Brooks has been an inconsistent shooter, so might as well add a guy like Corey Kispert who can really knock it down from three. Another guy I would look at is Chris Duarte. But I think you go Corey Kispert right here. I think Kispert makes a bit more sense. You don't really need a score like Duarte. I think you would prefer a guy like Corey Kispert who doesn't need the ball in his hands. The Knicks at 18. I like Cam Thomas kind of coming off of their bench as a scorer. But I think you go point guard, you got some really interesting options. Trey Mann, Sharif Cooper, Ayo Desungu. You've also got Jaden Springer, Max Asmus, and who else? I'm forgetting the player's name now. Um, G League guy. <laughs> Addition Nix. I guess Nix is not on here. But... Yeah, I think you look point guard. Uh, they haven't drafted point guard in a while, and people have expected them to draft point guard. I, I guess you got him in quickly. I think you still look point guard again. I also see small forward as kind of a position of need. Reggie Bullock's a cool player. I don't know if he's your long-term option, though. But I, I think you go point guard, especially in a position, like you're in a position to draft a point guard. I think you go point guard. Trey Mann, Sharif Cooper, Havdasumu. And Jaden Springer, I don't know if I would draft Max Aismas right here. Springer, really interesting. I don't know why people are sleeping on him. Uh, he's just extremely well-rounded. He's probably not going to be a number one or a number two option in the NBA, but he's still a really solid player to have around. And Trey Mann is going to be my other pick. Uh, just between the two of them, it's going to be between Mann and uh, between Mann and Springer here. 
Trey Mann also, really great scorer, showed a lot of composure at Florida, especially after over his last few games uh, in the tournament and in the conference tournament. Um, Trey Mann really showed out and really showed a lot of developments, especially from the three-point line, acted as a passer and as a scorer. And what is more interesting for the Knicks? I think they've been kind of defensive focused, but scoring has been an issue for them. And I think Trey Mann is what you need if you need a score. Jaden Springer is not going to be the scorer here. So they're going to go Trey Mann. These Celtics and 19, they've had a history of just drafting high potential players. And I think I'm going to continue that with Zaire Williams. Zaire Williams, crazy potential shooting guard, small forward, whatever he is in the NBA. I think you'd go for it because it's just been the drafting logic of the Celtics for quite a while. And there's no reason to stray away from it right here. They did it with Romeo Langford. They did it with Aaron Nesmith. Um, they like to use their earlier firsts on, you know, a really high potential player. Zaire Williams easily fits that mold. I mean, there's also James Booknight, but Zaire Williams. People are really high on this guy coming out of high school. So we're going to give him to the Celtics right here. Hawks at 20. Io DeSumo almost instantly. I'm going to click right here. Uh, gives Trey Young the ability to operate off ball. He's also a really great defender who can cover for um, Trey Young. He's like 6'5", he's not 6'4", and he's definitely a good playmaker. Plays on ball, off ball with Trey Young, and can guard the one or the two, whatever Trey Young doesn't want to guard. He's the perfect fit alongside Trey Young. I do like Springer quite a bit, but Desumu just makes more sense as a fit with Trey Young. 21, the Knicks are back up after selecting Trey Mann. And we're looking small forward here. Greg Brown's the best forward on the board. And, I mean, maybe you're looking BJ Boston. Maybe you're looking, I don't know where else you're looking. Austin Reeves, kind of a reach out of Oklahoma. But uh, James Booknight. I think Book Knight is going to end up being my pick here because, once again, I think they just need scoring. Greg Brown, really interesting player, especially on the defensive end. Uh, he's a lot of issues that needs to be ironed out, and I don't think the Knicks are willing to commit to a player like that when they're selecting a pick right here. So they're going to go with Book Knight, who also is a very flawed player, but he can flat out score the ball. He's a bit streaky, though, but they need scores, and he can kind of play the three. And they need, I think they need a bit of forward depth, a bit of small forward depth, and I think book name makes sense here. The Rockets at 22, they drafted Jalen Green with their first pick, and you go with the crazy high potential in Shreve Cooper. It's one of the weirdest players in a while. Dude's like 5'11", he's not 6'1", and he's a really great passer. I think he led the league in assists per game, led the nation in assists per game. And he can kind of finish, but he's not the greatest shooter, and he's not a great defender. So it's a really tough commitment to make, but the Rockets, I think, are willing to do it. Put him in a position to succeed with players like Christian Wood and Jalen Green. He doesn't need to be a number one option, and he can work on his shooting. Sharif Cooper has crazy high upside, and if you're willing to commit to it, which I think the Rockets are, because their future is very, very dull and lackluster. I think you go with Sharif Cooper right here. The Lakers at 23. I mean, I, I do like the point guard position for them quite a bit. Maybe they go center though. Uh, they've struggled at the center position and I mean, it's between point guard and center. I think they need a lot of point guard help, especially because, um, I mean, you're drafting based on uh, what didn't go well in the playoffs, right? You're looking at, okay, what do we need the most? And you're looking at Basset, you're looking at Bassey, you're looking at Springer. Maybe you're also looking at Jared Butler. I'm going to go center right here, though. Uh, I think we saw what worked with JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. Charles Bassey does a lot of similar things to those players. So we're going to go with Bassey right here. And the, the team works so much better with those players compared to their centers right now. Especially if Drummond ends up leaving them, Bassey makes a lot of sense. 24, the Rockets are right back up. They drafted Green, they drafted Cooper, and you're looking at high potential player again. Greg Brown, I think they need a forward. Um, they need a lot of everything, 
I mean, your main players you're looking at keeping around and prioritizing Kevin Porter Jr. and Kenyon Martin. <laughs> I mean, Greg Brown would fit in pretty nicely. And Cam Thomas also has high upside. I'm just worried about his defensive ability. So we're going to go ahead and draft Greg Brown, 3 and D prospect who could be insane on the defensive end. And I think Steven Silas is a pretty solid defensive coach. Hopefully can coach him up to be a pretty good defensive player. 25, the Nuggets are up. And I think you go point guard or shooting guard here. Uh, stack the depth on the bench. Stack that guard depth. It isn't that big of an issue, but I think that's what they need the most. Maybe you go center. Uh, I don't know if JaVale McGee is going to start stay around. And you're also looking forward. I do like Zeke Najee quite a bit, despite how he's played this season. Um, yeah, just seeing there's not a lot of bigs I'd be that willing to draft at this point. Maybe you go with uh, Daron Sharp out of UNC, but I, I don't think the Nuggets would commit to a player like that at this point. I think you're looking at Butler and Duarte to specifically get guard help, get experienced guard help, and it's just Duarte makes a... Well, I don't know. Jared Butler, draft him for what he did in the tournament and in the championship game here. Uh, just what he showed at the championship game, I think it's a bit more enticing than a guy in Chris Duarte who played, what, two games in the tournament. The Nets at 26. Let's see what the Nets are going to do. I mean, do you just go score? I, I think you go Springer. He's just too well-rounded compared to these other players who are flawed and, you know, they have weaknesses. Springer is extremely well-rounded. I think this just works for the Nets. Plug-and-play player, especially, I feel like they're kind of weak at the point guard position. So Springer makes sense with the Nets. He, he's going to learn a lot from Irving and Harden. And then there's the Clippers at 27. I think you bring in some more shooting help. This team's been amazing at shooting a three ball. Bring in a guy like Philippe Petrusev or Cam Thomas. Cam Thomas would provide quite a scoring outburst on the bench, but I feel like they need some big help, especially if, you know, eh, I don't know. I think they could use the shooting a bit more in the big man position and, you know, relying on heavy minutes from Patrick Patterson isn't exactly the greatest thing in the world. So ring and fully Petrusev. The Sixers at 28, they went to score last year on Tyrese Maxey and maybe they go scorer again, Cam Thomas, you know, I think they would like to draft the big, but this is another position, which I'm just like, if you're going big, you're probably going Roko Prakas, and, and there's not really a lot of other players I'd consider at this point, probably Jeremiah Robinson Earl, otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a difficult situation, I'm gonna go with a guy who's very far down here, actually, and I didn't even mention him up until this point, Herbert, Herbert Jones, Dudes like a Draymond Green who can shoot threes and drive to the rim. I really like Herbert Jones. I see the Sixers team. They've gotten a lot of shooting, but they need help at the power forward position. So we're going to go ahead and draft Herbert Jones. Uh, he's just like a, he's a 6'8 point forward who can defend. And you know, one of the top players in the SEC as the fourth leading scorer at Alabama. The Suns at 29, my team. Who do I want to give them? No, it's not Cam Thomas. It's I haven't dropped them because I haven't dropped them because I want Cam Thomas. I'm probably going somewhere here that's, you know, a little bit non-traditional. And thinking non-traditional, I'm thinking Joel Ayayi. Joel Ayayi, all the ways at 29, would be a bit of a reach, but he's really proved himself as a shooter, especially in their run to the tournament championship game. He's already a great defender and a pretty great playmaker, can drive to the rim. If you're looking for a successor for, a successor for Chris Paul, I just don't see many other players in a position to do so other than this guy, Joel Ayayi. And finally, I pick 30, the Jazz are going to round it out. And am I going to take Cam Thomas off of the board? I will. Cam Thomas, just too good of a score to pass up for a Jazz team who could really use some scoring. Maybe you'd prefer Chris Duarte, but Cam Thomas is higher upside, especially on a team that feels really old outside of Donovan Mitchell. Everyone else is like really old and they're on shorter contracts. I think they would prefer picking up a player like Cam Thomas right here. 
Anyways, that was a long video because I didn't know what I was going to do going in and I think I think it turned out solid. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe, maybe leave comments. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.